The anthemic Freedom 90, starting this one-hour special with George Michael. It's 25 years since George skyrocketed to fame as half of Wham!, a beginning that led to a Grammy award-winning solo career and record sales of 80 million. As far as he's concerned, this year he's been in the newspapers for all the wrong reasons, but when he announced he'd be touring for the first time in 15 years, the phone lines were jammed as fans, some of whom had never seen him perform, scrambled to buy tickets. If you were at his first UK concert in Manchester last night, you'll know that he didn't disappoint. His voice is sounding as good as ever, and the shows really are spectacular. And this from a man who swore he'd never sing live again. The fans are delighted he has. We were all very excited about, oh, is he going to show up? Is he going to be there? Is it really going to happen? And yes, he was there, and yes, it did really happen, and it was fantastic. When he came through those doors, there'd been a lot of talk that he was going to be given a stand innovation, but it went beyond that. People waiting for 18 years, it looks for a moment as if they're going to be 18 years actually welcoming him back. The crowd just went wild. Wild screaming, tears, hugging. There was actually a sea of light from mobile phones, and it was amazing to see. It was literally as if every single person in the crowd had their mobile up to take pictures or to film it, and you could just see the lights. It was spectacular. I did not think I'd see him sing in my lifetime, though. No. I did not think I'd see him sing live. Now, I think that after this tour is over, he might actually go and do something again, because it looks like he enjoyed it. Let's find out how the tour's been going. Great, actually. I mean, all my all my nerves dissipated after the first couple of shows, actually, in Barcelona, because I was so worried about my voice holding up. No, all my worries went quite a way back, and we're just really, really excited that the show's got more refined as it goes along, you know. And uh, obviously, it's just a thrill to see these audiences, you know, people being incredibly warm everywhere we go, really. This, this time, more than any other, ever, any other time I've played, and something that I didn't really appreciate, I think, when I was younger, I may, maybe it makes a difference to me that the, the audiences are wider in age group, because actually there have been a lot, I've been shocked at how, how many young people there have been, actually, who obviously are raiding their parents' uh, record collections, and I guess they hear, you know, what they think of as oldies on the, on the radio. So there's a really quite a wide um, uh, age range, which is quite surprising. But I think the other thing is just looking at people having such a good time. In the, the world we live in today, I look at that, and I get this incredible reaction every night when I walk out on stage and people go away really, really having had a good night. And you understand somehow, as you get older, how much of a privilege that is to be able to do that. You know, to actually be able to change that many people's evening into a great evening. I don't think I appreciated that when I was younger, so I really had this time. But apart from that, I think I've just... I've realised I must have been a very lonely man. Uh, that's all I can think of because this hasn't been frightening or difficult at all. This has actually been kind of worry-free experience, you know. And the whole thing's been really, really pleasant. So I have no no doubt I'll uh, be up for doing it again quite soon. For your fans, that will be a joy to hear. And the conversation about the Faith tour uh -huh. that we had previously, it seemed to me around that time what you were saying was you'd wanted something, you'd uh, aspired to a, a certain kind of uh, life and career, and uh, when you got there, you found out you really didn't want it at all. Absolutely, yeah. Well, I think, that, I mean, at that age, I think, you know, when I, when I did the 20, 20, oh, this is 25 live, and I was actually only 25, I think, when I did the Faith Tour, but I think there was, there was such a feeling of emptiness about the actual level of fame that I'd achieved that I couldn't see the good things about it, you know. I couldn't really experience the highs because I was too busy wondering what was going to make me happy. You know, if this incredible luck was, was not going to make me happy, I was too busy wondering about that. And I guess loneliness is really intensified if you're being admired by thousands of people every night very loudly and then going back to your hotel room alone. Yeah, I guess really it was the loneliness of the experience that I kind of, when I looked back, I mistook for genuine unhappiness, you know, with the touring. What point did you decide you were going to do this? What was the trigger point? Because you, you have talked about, and you've gone so far pretty much as, as getting gigs lined up before. There was a moment, I remember the moment that I thought, you know what, bite the bullet and do it. I don't remember it being insp inspired by anything particular. I remember just saying to myself, sitting here actually on my on my little bouncy ball that I used to keep my back adjusted. I was sitting here thinking, and I, and I remember suddenly having this understanding of my fear of regret that the fact that I'd always planned for the future 
in a strange kind of way and don't live in the moment is I'm always terrified of regret. And it occurred to me that actually I was going to regret not playing before a certain age at least. And I don't remember why that kind of epiphany came to me, but as soon as it did, it seemed very clear that what I should do was plan to take it on again. And I wasn't sure at that point that I wanted to do it on this level, but now I can't think of anything that will stop me taking it to stadiums now. Could be perfectly honest, has the, the excess publicity this year bothered me? What's bothered me has been having people outside my house. But other than that, I was still on my own journey getting myself ready for this, you know? Mm. And luckily that was a really good distraction because I had something really positive to do while all this rubbish was going on. But I've done that myself, really. I mean, that's really been about just cheering myself up for the last 18 months. We know this because we've spoken to British fans who, uh, as you know, went in their hundreds, if not thousands, of the European games. Mm. The things that they're saying are really interesting. I mean, they're, some of them are saying they never thought that they'd get you to, to see you doing a live show mm. again in their lifetime. Mm. That adds a lot to the, the atmosphere of the show, you know. That's a genuine undercurrent for the real fans, I think, is that I told them it was never going to happen and not, not to um, hold their breath and please not to be disappointed. And I changed my mind, so. Oh, my God. I'm an old man, I really need to sit down, I promise you. This is the longest show of the entire tour. Which is lovely for you and fucking tough for me. Okay, so I guess this is it, this is the very last time. Very last thank yous that I have to say. I just want to say that um, it's been an amazing, amazing, amazing ride, but there have been so many moments when the compromises have seemed too huge. And I just spent the last two years working out that every single fucking bit of aggro is worth it for this. I thank you for that, I really do. Right.